Hello everyone, this is Bradley. Today this is a preset tutorial talking about follow path constraint in geometry nodes. Um, as always, these presets are free from the link in the description. Also, uh, I may cover a little bit more topics beyond follow path constraint itself. So anyway, let's start. So here we are in Blender. And uh, here is a Bezier curve object that contains a geometry nodes node tree and inside the node tree we have a spiral node and uh, there's nothing special but uh, the, this spiral is completely procedural because it's produced by node and my goal is that I want to have this cube to follow the path of this curve and uh, what I can do is I put a follow path constraint and I select this curve object but you realize this cube is not uh, at start of this spiral curve and if you try to manipulate this offset you see this cube is not really following this spiral path and uh, no matter how you change the parameters it just doesn't work instead you realize that this cube is actually following the original curve without this spiral modifier as you will see. Okay. This means that uh, the follow path constraint that uh, Blender has by itself does not understand geometry nodes. This is simply because the geometry node is such a new system that uh, all the constraints cannot really understand it. It's just like uh, Blender 1.0 will not be able to read the file of 4.3 because it does not contain jump channels or anything okay i hope this is a understandable example and uh, that turns out the reason why i have to build a follow path constraint using geometry nodes because the geometry nodes must understand the geometry nodes so here let's just uh, add a geometry nodes version of a follow path constraint uh, here that we can go to the cube and we can remove these constraints and uh, in the modifier we can just call this follow path constraint preset and as mentioned before these presets are free from the link in the description and this preset is quite straightforward that I only have this kind of curve object to select a factor to control and uh, some options that we will discuss later uh, right now I just need to select this curve object it can be a mesh object as well but usually you want to do a curve so it does not really matter and uh, with the factor it's working on the normal curve okay but obviously that's not what we're looking for so we are going to turn on uh, the spiral node tree to make it a spiral and you can see this object is following this uh, modify the curve as well okay what's unfortunate is that uh, geometry nodes currently do not support the control of lights or cameras so that even if I want to have my camera to follow this uh, modify the path there's no modifier that I can add and even if I try to use the follow path constraint it will not do such kind of function it will just follow the unmodified version of this curve so that's very unfortunate because we made these presets to make the object to follow this modified path but it does not work for camera and this tends to be the reason why sometimes I still use animation nodes to do this kind of function so that uh, my camera can just follow it without any problem okay but obviously I no longer recommend people to study or learn animation nodes because it's such a complicated system and 99% uh, of case whether you are doing mobile graph or uh, visual effects you do, you do not need animation nodes you can use geometry nodes to replace that most of the time so other than that, let's go back to our 
examples of follow paths constraining geometry nodes. Uh, by itself, the factor goes from 0 to 1, which goes from uh, the start to the end of our curve. Okay, And uh, you can extrapolate that, which means you can learn to the extension of our curves. For example, you can type 1.4. Then you can see our cube disappears. This is because the cube has been overshoot to very far. Uh, but you can try to manipulate these kind of parameters without any problem. Okay. And you can go to the other direction as well, for example, negative 0 0.4. But you actually see that this cube has been shoot to a direction which is not really expected. Okay. Uh, this is simply because sometimes the extrapolation uh, done by Blender is a little bit weird. So you flip the start, then it goes to a more uh, natural direction. There's no real rule uh, how Blender interpolate that. So sometimes you have to do the menu flips to decide uh, which direction is what you're really looking for. Um, that's basically it. Next, I want to discuss this use radius option. It's not a very important option, but I just added that for whatever reasons. So um, it's basically to scale our object based on the radius of this curve. So for example, we can take a set radius and you take a span parameter. Span parameter goes from 0 to 1 from the start to the end of this curve, just like our factor. And in this case, our cube initially has constant scale along this curve. But uh, as long as we're using this radius, which is set by this set radius node, you can see this cube is small, like a zero scale, but it turns to be one at the end. Okay. Uh, I think this is a very useful function. Sometimes you do not want to use all this kind of uh, uh, edit mode function to tweak all this kind of uh, uh, radius, whatever stuff of your curve. You want to probably use some more procedural way and it can be used here. Okay. Next, let's talk about some basic concepts of how to build these presets. Uh, let's add the jump nodes, and I already added uh, an example of four path basics. So we no longer need this uh, external curve. Let's just go to our node tree. Okay. So this is a very simple node tree. That's I have a cube, and I have a transform node which is not doing anything right now, and I also have a spiral curve being generated, just like what we've done to the other object previously. So now I try to join geometry, so that I can see this cube and the spiral curve at the same time, and uh, to make this cube to follow this spiral curve, I can try to use this transform geometry, but I need to sample this spline. So we have this sample curve node. And once we put that, you can see it outputs a position. So we plug this position into the translation. And by manipulating this factor, you can see our cube is uh, basically following the path of this spiral curve. And if you want to see that more clearly, you can always join that so that you can see how it works. But this cube is not rotating around this spot. Sometimes this is what you're looking for. Other times, it's not. So what you can do is you can do a axis uh, to rotations so that you put one axis, put the other axis, and you generate a rotation. So this cube is rotating along this curve. Okay. Uh, we may discuss another time about all these kind of rotation nodes in the future. But right now, you just need to understand that this is the basic concept. And if you want to make it follow the radius, we have this curve radius as a parameter. Uh, we have this uh, uh, radius, radius, radius. Yes, we have this radius of this curve to be sampled, and it outputs as a value, and you can plug that into a scale. This scale is kind of very small for our default spline, so what we can do is just set curve radius. And we put a spline parameter. And by manipulating this effect, you can see 
this cube is following square and scaling up along with its radius. And if we turn that off, you can see the default radius is always very small for this kind of curves. Because all these kind of curves are initially made for hair object, and the hairs are very thin. So uh, they have a very thin default value that you have to tweak. But that's kind of other stories. But basically, this is the concept. So far, we are always talking about a single object. But uh, most of the time, if we are doing motion graphics, it's not a single object. It's many, many objects. And if you are working with instances, the concept will be a little bit different. You must not use transform geometry, but the concept of using sample curve node is still the same. And I'm not going to elaborate how to uh, build presets for uh, multiple instances following splines. I'm just talking about uh, the presets itself. So let's go with a different examples that I have uh, random curves being generated with this random helices distribution node. Uh, you can just instance curve or whatever, but I think this is just an easy way to uh, do it in this case. So these are just the random curves, and I want to have my cube to instance with them. So I'm just going to uh, add these presets or full of spots. Then I'm generating points around these spots. Okay. It's also using the sample curve you know, the concepts I mentioned earlier, but it's just made in a different way that we're using points along the spline. And the benefit of doing that is that we can have a instance on points. And I just instance these cubes. And if I want to follow this rotation, I just follow the rotation. So then I have this kind of cubes following it. Yeah? Um, to visualize everything better, we can turn on these curves again as well, and we can scale down this kind of cubes. And I also have some variations of these kind of cubes available, so that some one is smaller, some other ones are bigger, but anyway. And then you offset that, and you can also extrapolate that if you want. This extrapolate curve is built uh, separately so you can see how it's being made okay and of course you can try to flip and whatever okay these are discussed earlier that you can flip star tangent flip and tangent and so on so these are basic concepts here I want to remind you a fact that uh, sometimes you do not want to simply to have geometry following splines. Uh, for example, maybe I am scaling these cubes along the x-axis, and uh, you see it's kind of uh, very rigid for these kind of cubes following these splines. You want to have a kind of deformation. In such kind of case, you are looking for uh, the curve modifier. But obviously, the curve modifier will not work in this case as well, because neither does it understand geometry nodes as an old system. Okay, So we have to use geometry nodes version of curve modifier. So in this case, we are going to do it very differently. We are going to use a curve deformer. This is also a preset. I discussed it in some tutorials. Um, you may follow the right upper corners if you're interested in it. But basically, to use that, you just input the curves to curves, and you input the geometry to geometry. And so here, we only have a single cube along with all these kind of curves. So we instance for each curve. And you can see the direction is a little bit uh, wrong. You can either use this orientation with a combine uh, combine XYZ or combine rotation or you can just do that with a transform geometry 
and I guess it's y-axis rotating, yes. And we follow, uh, we have a flow on that. You can see these kind of cubes with enough subdivision is being distorted around these curves. And if you want to scale that, you scale that. And if you want to move that, you flow with it. Okay. So basically, the entire point is that if you want to have a deformation along with the curve, then use the curve deformer, which is which is a uh, geometry nodes version of curve modifier. Okay. Uh, the concept is basically the same as we discussed previously. It's still a different usage of this sample curve node. At last, I want to discuss uh, a different examples of follow splice. So in some kind of cases, uh, what people are looking for is, for example, you have a kind of a tank truck, and you basically have this kind of uh, tank truck, and you have all this kind of, I don't know how to call that, but a kind of a plates uh, running along this kind of a truck, okay? And uh, they are kind of rolling, 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 and uh, cycling. Basically, we want to have such kind of structures. So, how to do it? Because whatever we are trying to do previously with all these kind of follow spine examples, it's kind of a single cubes uh, on each spline. But right now, we want to have multiple cubes on different splines. So, in this case, there is another preset which is called array on splines. And we again have a curve, and it actually outputs a curve, which sounds to be kind of very weird. Okay, uh, but it's actually a lot of design issue. I'm not sure how to design it better because there are so many issues with it. But it looks kind of very bizarre, but it will definitely work. Basically, what you need to do is basically the same that you instance some points, and you put the cubes onto that. So you can see we have lots, lots of cubes. And to visualize everything better, we are again to join the geometry to have our initial curves. And we can remove this extrapolate because I don't need that. But we can scale that down so that we can see actually a single spline always have billions of these kind of cubes. If you want to have the rotations, you can put the rotations into that. And what's very important here is if you turn on this offset, you can see this kind of cubes is actually following this kind of splines in an array. Okay. This is kind of very nice. And if you want to loop that, you can see it says no loop. If you want to loop that, you just loop start and end. Then you can see these kind of cubes are looping around. And maybe it might be better if you put that a curved circle so that everything is more clear. That they are just uh, rolling, 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 rolling. Okay. So this is kind of concept. There are some other things that you can potentially deal with yet, but I'm not going to discuss yet today. Um, I think I've covered all these kind of related concepts. They are all originate from the usage of sample curve nodes. But of course, there are many different details about how to use them specifically. But basically, this is the concept. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll probably see you next time. Bye bye.